how does a story-rich mystery adventure game where your choices matter sound to you? If that sounds cool, then I think you may like today's game. Today's game is Where Birds Go to Sleep. Now, this is a husband and wife indie studio, which is fantastic. I love that. And I'm going to read the synopsis and jump straight into the game. Slip into the subconscious of Cormo, a criminal sent on a mission to chart new lands shrouded in a mind-altering fog. Never directly assuming control. You will mould him through every sentence you put in his mind, but you might not like what he becomes. Now, I think that's a fantastic synopsis, and it really suits the art style of the game, which I'm going to show you right now. So let's jump straight into it and see what we can find. Okay, well, I instantly love the music. The atmospheric feeling is fantastic just on the opening screen. So that's a great start. Now, as you may well know on this channel, I am not a visual novel style game kind of person. However, I am told this is not really a visual novel. And just with the setting that this game kind of has, it really intrigued me. I was really fascinated. And I told the developer this and they were more than happy for me to play it, even knowing it's not my type of game. So, you know, kudos to you. So let's just, you know me, I'll be honest. Let's find out what we get. So I'm going to start a new game. Um, I loaded it up just to see if it worked. It does. New game. Let's go. Make no mistake, you've made your decisions. Click. Every word you say, every thought acknowledged will plant a seed. Each gesture and inflection, no matter how insignificant, is a step that threads a clearer path to a secret garden. There is a hidden cost, a chance for any inkling to root itself deeply. Leave a mark. There is a bed of flowers made ready for you. For the moment when you eventually crumble under the pressures of life and lie down in the position assumed over and over again when you fall back on the nature you've cultivated your second nature Ooh, great build up very Again, atmospheric is the word I'm already getting from this the game. It's quite high today, isn't it? Some voice acting. What day is it today, anyway? Oi, fella. We've been quiet for some time now, you know what I mean? What's your name? Is this a choice? Find out what he's made of. Look at us, brother. <laughs> Two prisoners in a boat. As a start of a joke, we don't have to talk. <laughs> so there's this joke, but he probably won't like it. Okay, so this is now me affecting his subconscious, so I get to choose how he takes this. Now, I will say, before we go any further, there are some naughty words in this video. So um, if you've got kids listening or you don't like naughty words, then tune out now and this is as far as you're gonna get so you've been warned okay let's crack on do we hear the joke we've got to hear the joke haven't we you know i have a feeling yeah an intuition call it whatever you want and we'd go well together you and i make a good team uh-huh like you know hummus and bread we'd complement each other well it's always two essential ingredients Two vital things, yeah? Got two arms, two hands, two legs, but just one cock and one head. Now, two heads is better than one, but two cocks? Depends on who you ask. <laughs> you can't disagree, can you? No. <laughs> hey, hey, relax. 
That was out of order, I know. But should have seen your face, though. <laughs> what was your name, sorry? Dunlin. Dunlin. Dunlin, yeah. That's a, that's, that's a good name. Lovely name, mate. I'll enjoy saying it. Well, the prison guards told me your name. I know who you are. Tit. You fucking what? Tit. Like your mum's tit. <laughs> <laughs> they must have uh, got me mixed up with someone. Name's Como. C O R O M R M O. Yeah? Let's not get too familiar. <laughs> Uh, yeah, you're right. But I reckon we should. The voice acting really adds to it. I'm really pleased they've gone for voice acting in this because I really do think it needs it. Um, that's very good. A week has passed since your arrival at the prison colony. Okay. The camp has been abandoned. There is no one here, not a single soul. Dunlin spends his days looking out at the sea, awaiting the rescue party. Back home, your sister is ill. The cure is meant to be on this island. Mm. Find the missing people. Save your sister. We have a quest. Don't know how this. Okay. M. Um, was a new thought entered your mind? Talk to Dunlin or leave. Should we probe him a bit more? There you are. Talk to Dunlin. Is this how you go around trudging around in the mud? What? What do you mean? You're not really dressed for the occasion, are you? What does he know about style? He's just jealous. He's just jealous. Well, I'm dressed to impress, yeah? If there was other people here, I'd be treated like a king just because I look it. Trust me, this is how the real world works, my friend. I can see you haven't had much experience. But don't worry, just watch and learn. If you say so. Yeah, yeah, whatever you say, my friend. Oh, chucking in my friend at the end, huh? Ask about his occupation. So, Danlin, I never asked you. What was your job before becoming a professional bellend? <laughs> I'll have you know I worked close to the Myra on the higher levels of the sanatorium. And that means what? Huh? Can you, uh, elaborate on that? Maybe just a tiny bit, mate. I'm a bit stupid. <laughs> we were resolving the mysteries of air and vibration. Uncovering the complex formulae and principles that elude words. But hearing them brings our hearts closer to the sky. Or the sky closer to us. We haven't figured that one out yet. We made and played music, Cormo. Of course. Can't wait to hear some of your tunes. Some of your tunes. Thank you. Maybe later. I'm not having the best day. Do I want to talk to him? Do I want to find out what he's having? Come on, we'll keep it going. Dunlin friend. Dunlin friend. What is it, Cormo? We talked not long ago. <laughs> Take care, Dunlin. Oh, no more then. All right. See you later. Okay, let's leave. What's next? Okay, so okay, so we do get a little uh, map overview. This is different. Uh, to the provis provisory camp. Can't say that word. Or approach the large bonfire. Dunlin's a short walk away. Okay, so I don't want to go there again, so let's go to the provisory camp. Okay. Have a look at the smaller tent or wildly coloured pavilion. Bench to your right, the landing site is behind you. Uh, we'll start with this we'll start with the smaller tent. Just keep it keep it low key. There is a pair of putrid shoes on the floor, placed neatly under a made bed. A single bed. Unusual, given the circumstances. Approach the bed. 
There is a little bump under the blanket. Don't. What? Well, yeah, it's not me doing it, so we'll get him to do it. Oh, Christ. Um, there is a doll hidden under the blanket, tucked underneath a shirt. What's so if a grown man oh. sleeps with a doll? Put away. A new thought entered your mind. I don't know now. What is that? M. So I've pressed M now. Ragged doll. A bundle of rags invoking the form of a man. And a bit of nostalgia. The fabric is rough and crusty from salt. Stained by earthen colours. Colour spelled correctly, I like it. The filling and the insides have moved to unnatural places. A sign of years of use. Use and abuse. Use and abuse. Okay. Uh, its disfigured head is particularly concerning, showing a blank expression of resignation. Wow, he's, he's a thinker. Abandoned. Its soul left with its owner. Tell you what, he does more thinking than me if that's what he got from that. Should we sleep? Let's have a little sleep. No, no. Yes. Decided. Sleeping. We're having a rest. It's raining. Dream of pleasant things. It's going to go wrong, isn't it? Ah, uh, no. Yeah. I want to get up. I want to go to work. Let me sleep. Okay, so this is, this is, this is where it feels strange because you, you've got to remember that you are the subconscious of, of Cormo. So this is your his mind telling him subconscious telling him what to do. So. It's, trying to get your head around that sort of your role in this so we're trying to influence him and and guide him that way okay so what do i want to say to himself there's work to do take it easy take your time what are we are we a mean subconscious yeah there's work to do oh the pain ah oh, the pain of getting up while it's still dark we feel your Humans hormone. were not made for this correct um, humans were made to suffer. Uh, let's go a bit nicer. You can't just lie in bed forever. All right, not forever. Just five more minutes. Mm. It's the same every day. What would you prefer? Doing things on my terms. All right. No one to boss me around. No pressure. Is he an artist or an entrepreneur? Uh, you chose this. Nothing would ever get done. Did he choose this? We don't know. And whatever gets done now, every man here, apart from the busybody, he's put the absolute minimum and call it a day. It's true. This Same ship here. will reach its destination in spite of the crew. Not thanks to it. You chose this. Money, but the money's not here. It's difficult to find reason to get up today when my bay is a moon away. And what a pitiful sum it is. If I couldn't smuggle the rare goods, this miserable torture wouldn't be worth it. Smuggling what? Where is the ship headed? You're an ape that requires constant affirmation. It's difficult to find purpose for getting up. Smuggling, well... Let's find out where we're going. Uh, to Vanadzor. Vanadzor. Four places. Vanadzor, okay. Great place, if you can stand the cold. It's not that cold, but uh, it can snow. <laughs> uh, I just can't wait for those cold mornings. <sighs> they have no birds this time of year. Mental. <laughs> the birds all left south and then east. It's got more sense than the people. 
do you know what? It's really I, I really love the the style of the writing because it feels like he's it's not just that with characters they tend to have a character style you know and that's the way they talk and they're all very dark and mysterious and, and they always talk like this in rhymes and it's all very serious but I love the way he just like chucks in words that are kind of words that we you know just like saying uh, there's no birds there mental I love <laughs> I love that it's so sort of it's so out of character it makes it feel a lot more human because not everybody is the same all the time and I really like that I'm really enjoying that it's difficult to find a purpose for getting up anything else about this place sees a ghost town all right everyone's holed up inside waiting for the birds to return what's happening with the birds until then all day two is burned giant wicker bird effigies throughout the sea they've had a uh, bad case of locusts this year and apparently they're starving we're bringing the fuckers grain <laughs> grain they gave us last year and it's me who will have to unload the cargo again how can that even happen heavens forbid someone would go out and do some fucking work in that place superstitious bunch Achievement unlocked. Drudgery at dawn. Beautiful. Okay, interesting. So now we know we're going to this town to take the the uh, grain back. Okay, let's let's wake up now. Let's, a new thought. In. See a boat. <gasps> what the fuck was that? What was that? Quick, follow him. Dalit. Dalit, is that you? He went up to the beach. No, he went to the landing. Which way did he go? Uh, he, why is that one grey? I don't know what these mean. He went to the beach? Oh, I have to pick that one. Camp is not the direction. Bonfire, bonfire, not there. Dunlin, Dunlin. There he is. He's quick. What's happening? Dunlin, not now. I'm in the middle of something. It might not have been him. Pursue it. Was it him wandering around again? Ask him politely. Alan, were you in the camp a second ago? I'm in the middle of a prayer. Ask. Could whatever it is wait a minute? No. Politely disagree. Uh, yeah. Nah. Listen. I don't want to be improper. Mine was all due respect. Darling, I saw... I don't fucking know what I saw, but... You remember? Your station was here. I told you not to go around the camp. You had to watch the shore. Cormo? Is he trying to interrupt me? He's trying to tell me something. Yes. What is it? It wasn't me. Now, I want to finish my prayer. Okay. Who was it then? Yeah, well, of course. It's better this way. I'll come around. I have fears as many as there are stars on the sky. You said it. We have to work together. Keep a strong mind. For now, let me pray. I really like the, the art style is really good. I, I feel like I'm really connected to the story. You are too trusting. That's fine. Mistakes happen. Yeah. I hope you would just take my word for it. <sighs> Why can't things be simple? <laughs> Everyone assumes the worst of me. I'm not that bad, am I? Did I make a mistake by being so forward? No. 
I did what I did. What he does now is his choice. You should be more careful next time. Maybe there was a better way of warning Danlin. Hmm. A new store entered a piece of jewellery on the bed. The one and only unique and extraordinary locket housing Cormo's prized possession. It must have slipped out of Cormo's pocket. Looking at it would always guarantee a good night's sleep. Why not take a look? There is the pet. Okay, we've done this bit. Single unusual bed. Go outside. Okay, let's go into the coloured pavilion. <coughs> this great tent oh. housed multiple convict explorers. There are multiple beds, trunks, chests and chairs all around the pavilion, along with makeshift floorboards and carpets. Carpets. I'm speaking now. It almost feels like a house, but the stench in here is unbearable. Oh, smells horrid in here. Oh, I can't. <coughs> I can't. Leave. Okay, we'll do a couple more little conversations and then we'll call it quits. So let's have a look. To the beach to your right. To the right, a forest looms. A great wall of impenetrable fort and imp of an impenetrable fortress staving off the salty, soft breeze from the spreading sea, overlooked by a giant rock. Rock, Neil? It's a quote. Don't um, There are shoes thrown about. Look at the far rock. To the forest. Back to the camp. Look at the far rock. Let's go look at the rock. The boulder, a four-minute walk, walk's distance, forms a natural pier. A lookout at the sea would be a nice place to think things over one day. But today is not that day. Hundreds of shoes, along with some shirts and trousers, are left lying on the beach, moved in and out by the tide. An eerie sight. There's something else. Have you noticed? Notice now. Cormo's eye twitches. An odd tickle. A shiver crawls across the surface of his brain. You realise the shoes are of all vastly different sizes. Some of these shoes are very, very small. Midgets. Women's shoes. These tiny shoes would fit women's feet only. Everybody knows no woman was sent to this prison colony island. Proof? There could have been women here. There is a possibility of women being present. They were sent here. To chart the land just like the men. To be used for relief as a reward for men. They send our non-properly born naive women to be raped and used by sweaty, disgusting convicts, rapists and murderers. No. You know the benefactory of is smarter than that. A woman gets impregnated. They would have to send a eunuch. What's that sound? A wet crunch. Unbelievable. In the corner of his eye, Cormo sees her. A hermit crab, the size of a fist, crawls out from a tiny leather boot, only to slide into another, slightly larger boot. Moments later, the boot sprouts long spider-like legs and trots away 
towards the ocean. It begs the question, if you were to live in a shoe, where would you live? Oh, the front, of course. Why the heel? Naturally, where would you live? Do you want to get rain with the heel or do you want to get... Oh, my God, the front, of course. You're trapped in the front, no, but you're going to get wet in the heel. Mm. The front. To think of it, it must be quite seedy by the front. It's always dark, stuffy and very humid with the ever-present moisturised sweat. The smell must be undescribable indescribable undescribable what's the difference between undescribable and indescribable in the comments please uh, no one would bother you there or rather no one would bother you there bother with you there you shouldn't bother either <laughs> a fascinating topic think of it next time you find some shoes around the camp so strange <laughs> so weird to the is forest. there something I missed? I won't be back for a while. Turn to the beach. Back to camp. The landing site behind you. Approach the large bonfire. Yeah, so as I was saying, I don't know if I finished my sentence now. The... The artwork, real subtle, it's not just still images. There's subtle animations with the clouds and things like that. So there is something going on to look at. And I f I'm finding the art style really does draw a brilliant picture of, of where I am and how things are. I don't feel like it's restricting me at all, that I can't walk around and move places. Um, it's setting the scene really nicely. The music, atmospheric music is great in my, in my headphones. And I'm really invested in what is going on. So, let's see what happens. This massive pyre is made of raw, barely processed tree logs stacked on top of each other. The dead branches and dried bark were left untouched. It's a rough and instinctual monument erected for a singular purpose. How did they get the wood up? For what purpose? Anybody's guess? What do you think? A religious structure aiming skyward, a proclamation of presence, something else. But what? There are chairs around the pyre, glass bottles littered around. The gleams and twinkles of broken glass uh, perforate through the sand. The smell of alcohol has dissipated long ago. Alcoholic beverages are forbidden by the benefactory and should not be supplied. So what gives? Being an explorer is a miserable job. And so, as if by accident or mercy, a barrel or two find their way onto the supply boats, along with fruit that no one eats, but instead uses as wine brewing. You wouldn't, you would know. There are chairs around the pyre. Why? The prisoners drank and danced among their own. No, both prisoners and guards... Um, prisoners drank and danced among... Yeah. Who else would understand them but their own ilk? Even on this island, the properly, the properly borns would not join the merriment around the bonfire. The simple songs and dances and cheers, oil and water don't mix. The huge pyre was never lit. For when things go south, it is to be set alight, the smoke reaching into the higher stratosphere, letting all and sundry know what's happening here. We're loading. Oh! This raging fire would touch the clouds, bold and ferocious, polluting the night sky with hues of warmth. It would be seen from across the horizon, an unmistakable clue. Good to know I can ask for help. 
Why wasn't it used? Don't even think about it. There is a reason it wasn't used by anyone in the prison colony. However, much they needed help from the city of Ugarit. The signal fire is not here for you. It's a warning. Achievement unlocked. A bonfire party. And that is where we're going to end today's playthrough. I hope you enjoyed it. I actually think this is really, really intriguing. I'm definitely going to play some more of this. I'd love to know what your first impressions are. Do you agree with what I've thought so far? Is it a game you want to check out? If you do want to check it out, then you can do so on Steam. It will be releasing on Steam, good old games, itch.io, and uh, depending on the success of the game launch, then it may come to consoles if you like it enough. So if you're interested in it, check it out. You can find all the links to the game below. Um, there'll be the developer's Twitter. There'll be the Steam link for you. There is a demo right now available, but I'm not sure how long that will last. So if you've missed it, you've missed it. But if not, hey, you've got a little... 20 minute playthrough of what you're likely to get so i hope you enjoy it please let me know if you pick it up thank you for tuning in i'll see you next time goodbye